Yeah. Your next comic, this guy is hands down one of my favorites. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Bounce Adams. What's up, McCormick? Hey, y'all give it up for Jesse Jarvis for putting this shit on for two years. Now, every time I go into a bar, I get one of three responses after I introduce myself to a woman. I'm taken. I'm lesbian. Are you contagious? <laughs> yeah, like a friend of mine took me to an after hours massage parlor. And he told me, if you pay $125, an Asian woman will massage you where it counts. I'm not paying anyone $125 to massage my kneecaps. <laughs> All right. <laughs> A little bit of laugh on that. Like, I had to get psychologically evaluated a few years back. And I told my therapist that I listened to a lot of rap music and because I thought it was very philosophical and that NWA stands for Nietzsche with Attitude. <laughs> my therapist told me bullshit. NWA stands for Nutcase with Autism. It's okay to laugh at that joke. <laughs> I won't take it personal. Stand-up comedy is plan B. Just in case my career is a romance now that this doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I think my first romance novel is going to be called I've Got Herpes, A Tale of Forbidden Love. <laughs> I also like to do a lot of creative writing in addition to stand-up. And uh, I got three books that I'm trying to work on. The first one is Hand Job Psychology, a Manifesto. <laughs> Transvaginal Mesh, a Novel. Okay. <laughs> and you might want to get that shit checked out. My autobiography, <laughs> a cautionary tale. <laughs> you'll be good. That's my time, y'all. I'm bound south. Bound south, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You know what? I think we should give a big round of applause for your first lady of the evening. Not like a prostitute. No, she's not a prostitute. She's a comic. She's really fucking funny. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Miss Trish Blaine. <laughs> Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, your next comic. He's actually about to start a new show at Baja Bean <laughs> Company tomorrow night. And uh, but this guy's also one of my favorite comics. So goddamn it, I want to hear a big, big round of applause for Jay Walter Brayman. Jesse mentioned I'm uh, going to be doing a room at Baja. I work at Baja. A lot of my coworkers, uh, when they find out I do comedy, the first thing they ask me is, you know, do you include me in your set? Do you do any jokes about me? And I always tell them I think it's a little arrogant. They think they have that kind of impact on my life. <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, decorating the, my entire house with nude photos of myself. And that way, whenever people come over to my house and ask me what I look like naked, I can point to the photos and say, it's like that. And while they're distracted, I'm going to drug their drink. Because uh, something important to show on a first date is confidence. <laughs> Glad you guys find that funny. Because the police don't. <laughs> I think it's confession time here at McCormick's. Uh, I've had something I need to get off my chest for a very long time. Uh, I love smoking weed as much as I hate the band Sublime. 
I always have. I always will. I hate all of their songs. I don't think they're that great of a band. I'm tired of seeing Date Rape come onto my playlists and my mix CDs. It's not even that good of a song. Like, if you think about it, how terrible are your friends that taking a stand on date rape sounds like a really radical stance? Guys, I've been, I've been thinking this whole date rape thing is probably a bad idea. Slow down there, liberal Larry. <laughs> the way I hear it, only 47% of people are against rape, and who really cares about that? But I, I wanted to get a little more into this song and figure out why I hated the song Date Rape so much, and I figured it out. The basic story of the song is, guy and girl meet at a bar, guy gets girl drunk, takes her home, rapes her. Next day, she calls her lawyer, lawyer takes guy to court, judge throws him to jail, guy gets raped. Which, not really a big statement there. Ha 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 ha, your ass now. But you think we've taken a guy that already has a low opinion of women and is willing to use underhanded means to get what he wants, and now we've given him a grudge and a persecution complex. Now, I know you guys aren't laughing too hard now, but summer vacations are coming up. You're going to start planning them in about five, six months, and I guarantee you California's moved down the list a few, a few spaces. That's the kind of joke that sticks with you. You don't laugh tonight, but five months down the road, God damn it, Brayman, you've horn swoggled me again. Because you are from the 1940s in my fantasy. I think every bottle of Sunny Delight orange juice should come with a free child-sized t-shirt that says, the condom broke and my parents thought I was the solution to all their marital difficulties. That's the only explanation I could come up with as to why any parent would walk past rows and rows of orange juice, things that come from an orange, and instead grab at that bottle and go, you know what, this industrial-sized drum of neon orange dye and sewage water it must be much better for my growing child. Letting him play chicken down by the railroad tracks hasn't been doing quite the trick I needed to. I think I read a lot of my jokes in the grocery store. The other day I saw a guy, the only thing he had in his cart was uh, red meat, and non-alcoholic old Milwaukee. Yeah, I don't. I don't even have a punchline for that. I'm still trying to figure out what he's going to do with those two food items. Hi, how's it going? Great. Doing all right tonight? Of course. It's kind of cold out. <laughs> Jay Walter Brayman, Doctor Shane Kupnab. <laughs> Awkward. Jay Walter Brayman, everybody. Go check out the show at Baja B tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. I believe it's 8 o'clock. Go do it. Uh, your, next, your next comedian, I say comedian because she is a lady, a very funny lady. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Adrian Bowman. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. I'm going to be real with you folks. I may run off to take a shit. I have one of those friends that likes to try different cleanses, and she tried to get me to do one, and it's very interesting. It's been a lovely day. She tried to convince me to do one, the Activia Challenge. I don't know if you guys heard of it. It's yogurt that helps women poop. Yeah, it doesn't work. But it's expensive. It's $2 for each individual yogurt. And I found out you can't buy them individually. Don't try that. So I use the poor girl cleanse. I go to Taco Bell. That Dorito taco will clean you out. Yeah. A lot faster than any yogurt would. And it'll burn too. In case you like that side effect. <laughs> That guy does. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <sighs> so it's getting cold outside, which is great. The only time, the only thing I like about winter is that I get to grow out my winter coat for my legs. 
Yeah. Don't worry though, I do shave the necessary areas, like my back. I did point to the Twat region, so I will discuss that for you gentlemen that were wondering if I was pointing there. Ladies, it's cute that you shave different characters or shapes into your Twat, but the one I don't understand is the landing strip. It looks like Hitler. It's hideous. Just stop. I hate it so much, I only shave the landing strip and rock the Krusty the Clown. I even dye it blue. And there's a little pink nose. So I'm single. And I encounter cock blocks. What's up? What's up? I'm kind of blocking right now. <laughs> That's what he thinks. Alright, so as a woman, the number one cock block I deal with, periods. And if you're a guy that doesn't care, I don't do the vampire thing, so don't talk to me. Number two, children. I don't have any of my own, but I date older guys. Okay. I date black men, so they tend to have kids. <laughs> so if they don't have their kids, then I'm on my fucking period. Yeah. But there is an upside. I do get to look forward to becoming a smilf, a stepmom. I'd like to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Guys, on a first date, if you want to keep your woman around, buy her batteries, not flowers. And here's why. Flowers die. And we don't want to look like a whore. So if you buy us batteries, we'll go home and think about you that night while we're using them for our toys that you guys have heard so much about. So I can't move back home anytime soon. The last time I did, I saw my dad naked. And that you're filming this, that means he's gonna watch it. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I saw him naked, and what was scary is he didn't dodge out of the way or try and cover up, he just stood there. So I did what any of us females would do. You're curious, you wanna know what you would look like if you were a boy, so I looked. I had to do a double take. And that's why I date black men. <laughs> so now my dad can't get mad when I bring home Jamal or Tyrone or Jamar. Okay, I did this joke last night in Virginia Beach and this guy after the show came up to me and showed me his ID. It was a white dude named Tyrone. Oh, that, that was great. All right, I'm Adrian Bowman. You guys, that's my time. Adrian Bowman, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, oh my gosh, you forgot all my white friends named Jamal. That's weird. Bye, bye, bye.